Hello everyone. Thanks for joining. We are going to play an interactive game. If you enjoyed the last one, I think we're going to enjoy the second one even better. This one that the captain has dropped today is called The Ghost in the Box. And I have not watched it. So this shall be interesting. Hello to Crimezilla and Lake Michigan and Lipsha and Taffy and Serial Child One. And I think I got everybody. So here we go. The video you're about to watch is an interactive game where the choices that you make directly affect the outcome. At the end of each video, new video links will appear which will represent different things that you can do in the story. And by clicking on one of those links, it will allow you to decide what you want to do next. In this game, you'll be playing the role of a paranormal investigator. And for the last year, you've been communicating with a spirit using a device called a ghost box, which records something called EVP, or in layman's terms, it can record ghosts. You're almost positive that the ghost that you've been speaking with is actually a missing woman named Anna, who you are now rather certain actually passed away. Anna's only been able to communicate with you with short one-word answers and occasionally move objects in the room with you. You've published the videos of your communications with Anna to YouTube, and the videos were an absolute hit. Web sleuths online are fairly certain that the Anna that you've been speaking to is actually the ghost of a 30-year-old woman who went missing by the name of Anna Morris. Anna was an only child, and she was living with her mother, and unfortunately, Anna had some problems and was arrested numerous times for drug-related offenses, and... As a result, law enforcement didn't really seem to look into her disappearance very deeply. Using your ghost box, you were able to record short one-word answers that Anna gave to you. Now, some of the words were too difficult for you to make out, but some of them you could make out. And this is what they were. Yeah, no. Listen. Indiana, Peru, October, 19th, Earth, season. Now, this is so interesting because Anna went missing when she left her home in Peru, Indiana on October 19th, and her mother is in fact named Stacy. The video of you communicating with Anna went viral, and much to your surprise, Anna's own mother, Stacy, saw the video and reached out to you via email. Stacy explained that she believed you were actually communicating with her daughter because the night she went missing, Anna didn't bring her purse with her, and that was one of the words Anna said to you in her EVP session, and it wasn't a detail known to the public. Stacy has asked you to come to her home with your equipment and to try to communicate with her daughter so you can bring closure to her disappearance. Now, you explained to Stacy that when you arrived, you would need time alone in the home to attempt to communicate with Anna, and Stacy has agreed to give you the run of the house. You've now arrived at the home of Stacy Morris, and you can't help but be taken back by how beautiful it is. You make your way up to the door only to see that Stacy is standing in the entryway. And for a woman in her 50s, Stacy looks surprisingly young and seems genuinely thankful that you've come to help her. Thank you so much for coming. I was getting worried you weren't going to be able to make it. You exchange a few more pleasantries with Stacy, but before Stacy agrees to leave you alone in the house, she does say one last thing. If you need anything, please feel free to text me. On the upper floor of the house, there are double doors for the security room. And that's the only room that I ask is off limits. That room records every room in the house and I walk around naked sometimes. So please don't mess with that room. 
I actually lost a key, a key to the security room. So if you manage to find it, please put it on the kitchen table. And please don't disturb that room. If you need anything, anything at all, feel free to text me. And with that, Stacy leaves you alone, standing in the alcove of the front door. When you're ready, click on the link to begin your investigation. All right, here we go. Next step. You enter the house and begin to make your way around. You find an office that's directly to the left when you enter, and across from that office you find a sitting room and it's complete with a fireplace. You continue making your way through the house, kind of just taking it all in. You find a dining room, and then you find a large living room, complete with a piano. What would you like to do? All right. So here's where we need to figure out who wants to choose the next thing that we do. Okay. So go ahead and put in the chat where we should go next. So the first person that pops up to me on live chat. We'll go. We got the use the ghost box, explore the house, inspect the room, use EMF reader. All right. Randy says use the box. All right. So that's what we're going to do because Randy said it. All right. So use the box. Use the ghost box. You pull out a device known commonly in the ghost hunting community as a ghost box. The box generates white noise and cycles through random frequencies very quickly. However, it's not hooked up to an antenna. The logic being that spirits can manipulate this white noise and use it to communicate. You turn the box on. You don't seem to be getting any usable EVPs right now. What would you like to do? Okay. So what do we got up here? What should we do? You use the EMF reader, explore the house, or inspect the room. Inspect, Taffy says. Oh no, I went too far. Inspect. Is that what Taffy said? Inspect. Okay. Oopsie. <laughs> Take a look around the room. First, you notice that there is a stone gaslit fireplace with a television hanging over it on the wall. There's two large shelving units with glass doors on either side, but they seem to only hold various generic knickknacks. You notice that there's a large grand piano that's also in the room, and it's a newer piano that's capable of reading sheet music and playing it automatically when the sheet's placed into a slot in the piano. The book that holds the sheet music is placed just over the keys on the piano and it seems oddly to have one of the pages missing. What a shame. I mean, to spend all of that money for a piano that can play music for you just to lose some of the music sheets. What would you like to do? Use the ghost box or use that reader. I know Gray likes the readers. <laughs> oh, explore the house. Everybody's saying explore the house, explore the house. Okay, sorry. I thought we already did that. Here we go. You begin to explore the house. 
You make your way upstairs first. The house is large and seems somewhat old. The stairs and floorboards creak just a bit when you walk over them, but otherwise it seems well maintained. It's very you nice find house. two guest rooms on this floor and a master bedroom. And you also find the double doors in the hallway that Stacy told you to not open because it's the security room. Nothing seems to jump out at you other than how clean the house is. Stacy must have been a clean freak or spent a ton of time cleaning knowing that you were coming today. You eventually make your way back downstairs and down into the basement. Never go in the basement. You find more Never. bedrooms and another sitting area. There's an exercise room. One thing that slowly starts to stand out to you is just how generic the house actually is. There's no photos on the walls, nothing personal on the end tables or desks. Everything feels very sterile down here. Or what? maybe you just aren't very clean at your own house. Whatever. You have a feel for the home now. What would you like to do? I'd like to leave, please. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing next? It doesn't give us the reader thing this time. So the options are inspect the upstairs, inspect the basement, use the ghost box. Darn it. <laughs> inspect the main floor. Basement. All right. I'm not taking any of you with me in a haunted house ever. <laughs> We're not inspecting. You head downstairs to the basement to give it a more thorough look. You find an exercise room with some weights and some equipment in it. You do notice that some of the weights aren't placed in the order they should be, but whatever. You find a bathroom with a jacuzzi and a shower and a bedroom that's located just across the hallway. However, just before you get to the bedroom, you see a large metal door. Oh, I like those dryers. You walk over to the door and try to open it, but it's locked. You aren't really sure where a door like this could even go, seeing as you're already in the basement, but you brush it off and decide it must be some kind of a storage room. You know, there's another bedroom in the basement with a chest at the foot of the bed, and that's locked as well. There is some generic artwork on the walls, and everything just feels cold down here. The whole house just feels off to you. What would you like to do? I like it. I like the cold look. <laughs> All right, what are we doing next? Let's not open the trunk. Main floor, upstairs. <laughs> okay. Use the ghost box. It's never good. You pull good. your ghost box out of your pocket and turn it on. Something's going to jump at me, isn't it? Just be prepared. I may scream. Yes. You truly believe you just heard a word, but you play back the recording just to make sure. Yes. A chill runs over you. Sounds you like think me. You know what you need to do next. That's weird. All right. So use the reader, investigate the office, or text Stacy. Did that voice sound like my voice? <laughs> I thought I was getting feedback in my ears there for a second. Hey, Kaleidoscope. I didn't see you come in. Hey, Lollipop. All right, fine. Here we go. EMF reader. Oh, my. <laughs> that was loud in my ear. <laughs> you pull out your EMF reader and start to scan the area. The device does register some slight electromagnetic fields, but 
they're really not high enough to be considered meaningful. Electromagnetic fields can be caused by any number of electrical devices, and what you're looking for are dramatic spikes that can't be explained by nearby wall outlets or electrical devices, and you aren't seeing any readings that you would consider as paranormal at the moment. <laughs> Seems you may have actually picked up something there for a brief moment. <laughs> you wait a bit to see if anything else happens, but it seems that whatever it was is gone now. Well, in reality, would I like would run do? and scream like I just did. <laughs> I knew it was coming, you know? All right, what are we doing next? <laughs> Oh, sorry if I, that was really loud in your ear. <laughs> Text Stacy or investigate the office. <laughs> I love these things, though. All right, here we go to the office. You make your way into the office and take a look around. The room itself doesn't feel like a true office to you. It's more like one that's been set up mostly for decoration. Things are immaculate in here and nothing really seems out of place. You make your way to the desk and try to open the drawers and each one of them are empty except for the uppermost drawer, which is locked. You look around and you don't see a key. It's an oak desk and it looks pretty expensive so breaking it isn't really going to be an option you thought you might have heard something but you're really not sure where what would you like to do hide that's what i'd like to do i'd like to hide was that gunshots or footsteps <laughs> are we going to inspect the basement again or are we going to the main floor upstairs Yada, yada, yada. The box. Is this the one we did earlier? Is it you pull the ghost box out of your pocket and turn it on. You think you can make out a word, but you're not sure. You use the function on the ghost box that allows you to repeat what you just heard. Please. What would you like to do? I don't know. I'm lost. Did it say leave? Footsteps. Was that footsteps? All right, what are we doing next? What haven't we done? Not my voice that time. Yeah, I thought that the little box was over. Last time it was in the middle, so. It said wait. Ooh. Wait. Okay. So we're going upstairs according to Lollipop. Here we go. Da, 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 da. You head upstairs and begin to look around. Everything seems just as it was before. Things still feel cold and everything looks perfect. This home was cleaned and basically nothing personal is anywhere in the house. You head from room to room and you don't seem to find much of anything. Mm -mm, no, don't answer. Your heart feels like it's about to stop in your chest and you look around the room. Yep. You mm -hmm. definitely heard knocking when you entered this room. Maybe something fell over. Maybe a floorboard creaked when you stepped on it. There was without any doubt knocking coming from this bedroom and it seemed like it was coming from under the bed don't look in there slowly you don't. look under the bed but oh God, there's I'm... nothing there except 
I'm not some looking old at it. scrap paper. <laughs> you pull the paper out from under the bed to find out that it's actually a music sheet. It's Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. What would you like to do? Not play the piano. <laughs> Answer the door? No, I don't want to answer the door. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hey, Dana. That's okay. <laughs> You'll just hear all of us crazy people. Now look at you. I guess we're going to go play some Beethoven. <laughs> You head to the main floor, music sheet in hand, remembering that there is a piano in the main sitting room of the house, and it's one of the newer, more expensive pianos that plays the music for you. You make your way toward the piano and pause for a moment, looking around, before you place the music sheet you found under the bed into the slot of the piano. Creepy. Something's going to jump at me. I had my eyes covered because I knew it was going to happen. I... You know you saw something. What Eventually, was it? you regain your composure and start to look around on the ground. You're also sure you heard something hit the ground when the piano began playing music. Sure enough, you're right. There laying on the ground, you find a very strange key. You've never seen a key like this before. What would you like to do? cry <laughs> it's not an option here what are we doing next da, 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 da. again with the box <laughs> fine <laughs> You pull your ghost box out of your pocket and turn it on. You are fairly sure that you captured something. You use the function on the ghost box to repeat what you just heard. Caught? What would you like to do? That's not an option. I don't know how to answer the door. <laughs> okay. Main floor upstairs, inspect the basement. What are we missing here? Stop. Okay, yeah, I thought maybe it was saying stop. I said stop. basement oh. that's what I thought maybe we gotta go back to the basement did we miss something I think we did didn't we that one we ended up you head to the basement and begin to take a look around you go from room to room with your EMF reader getting a spike here and there nothing is really standing out to you as incredibly significant you search a bit more before you eventually head back to the main floor what would you like to do? Hmm. Okay. What did we do wrong? Yeah, I think we missed something. Was it after the main floor or upstairs? Hey, Cold Truth. 
Welcome. We're stuck. <laughs> We're stuck. Uh oh, here comes my daughter. Do you know what I did wrong? Where's the locked door at? In the basement. You idiot. <laughs> my daughter just called me an idiot. I think it is. This, I'm an idiot. Right? But where did we go wrong? How do we get... Do we? Because ha- we're in the basement now. Go upstairs? They're saying go upstairs. Yeah, probably go upstairs. Maybe we can find something else. Okay. Because Randy keeps saying answer the door. I don't want to answer the door. <laughs> that, that's death. I thought you were taking a shower. Oh, okay. Now you're so you're playing on your no, iPad I'm out there. Watching you do it. No, from your iPad. And I'm agreeing with Chaotic Beauty. You're the best. <laughs> Go away. <No. laughs> okay. Everybody's saying upstairs. We got one main floor. All right. If we come back to where we were at, sorry for the interruption, <clears throat> children. You head upstairs and take a look around. Everything seems to be just as you had left it before. You go from room to room with your EMF reader getting spikes every so often. Nothing is standing out to you as significant. You look a little bit more before you eventually decide to head back to the main floor. What would you like to do? (laughs) My daughter's all about these interactive games. She plays them all the time. Okay, so we're going to go to the main floor because obviously we're missing something. You decide to inspect the main floor. You walk around with the oddly shaped key in your hand going from room to room. You obviously try to use the key on the desk in the office. Sweet. (laughs) She's mean. She's mean as a snake. No. First, but... Thank it's pretty you. clear to you that this key is not going to fit that lock. Here we go again. You definitely heard something. There's almost something in the house that's trying to help you. Mm-hmm. It must be in this room. Whatever it wants you to find, it's in this room. Is it going to jump at me again? Is that the one? Okay. 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 Here's something new. This is new. Inspect the couch. Inspect the art. Inspect the fireplace. Inspect the lamp. (laughs) Yeah. So my daughter said the key is for the basement. I don't, know, I don't know how well you guys could hear, but she was speaking very loudly at me. Um, but it is for the basement, but I'm not sure. Well, I didn't see anything down there, but Randy did tell us to answer the door, so there has to be an option for that. Okay, sorry. All right, so I'm seeing... Uh, let's inspect the fireplace? But I also see an art in the couch. Most people say in the fireplace, so we'll start with that, see how it goes. You inspect the fireplace, but you're not really sure exactly what you're looking for. You're about to turn away when you notice something that you hadn't noticed before. There inside of the fireplace is a small hole, the kind that's used to turn on the gas for a gas fireplace. You stare at the key in your hand for a few moments before you decide to give it a shot. You stick the key inside of the hole. Oh no, is it going to jump at me? There on the ground is a small metal key that fell out of the fireplace when you turned the (gasps) gas key. You think you might know where this goes. What would you like to do? Okay. Ghost box, office, dining room. We got a real looking key now. The skeleton key. Okay, kaleidoscope said office, so let me see here.
This is like going in Amy's office. You head to the it's office spooky. with the small key. Something just happened. You're not sure exactly what it was, but something definitely just happened. You take yeah, a few moments to attack. regain your composure, then eventually you make your way to the desk. And just as you suspected, the key fits the lock on the desk perfectly. Who the hell would go to the links like this to hide a key? You unlock the desk only to find a small diary. You stand for a moment before beginning to read. It reads, The Diary of Anna Morris. And it begins, My mother hates me. Which is ironic because I'm exactly like she is. When I was young, my mother told me that I was different than the other kids around me and that it was something that ran in our family. My family was so different that they had their own secret group. They owned lots of properties. They were important and they could do things that other people couldn't do. They even had secret tunnels so that they could meet each other and no one would ever know. They even called each other by their middle names because it was their secret name. But most of my family are gone now because my mother won't let me near them. The only people I have now are my mother and me and she hates the idea of me wanting to know more. She told me that if I kept searching, looking for more answers, she would write me out of her will and disown me. She said it was for my own good, but how was leaving me homeless with no family good for anyone? She set this house up like a maze with secrets and puzzles everywhere. She doesn't know that I figured out most of them and I was able to find her desk key in the fireplace. She hides everything she doesn't want me to see in that desk and now I know why because I found her will in there and she wrote me out of it. I'm going to end up homeless, and I'm never going to fully understand what made my family so special. There's a chest in the basement bedroom. You have to figure out some kind of a math puzzle in order to open it, which I'm fairly sure my mother created because I'm not very good at math at all. I am, however, on Reddit, and I posted the puzzle there this morning, and I'm sure someone will figure it out soon. I'm going to get in that chest no matter what, and I have a feeling that it will give me the key to access the tunnels and to all the answers she's been keeping from me. You close the diary and put it back in the desk and lock it. What would you like to do? Okay, upstairs, main floor, basement, ghost box. I did notice that the ghost box box, the ghost box, use the ghost box box the time does change so i wonder if we should be using that more but just an observation i think the last one was like a minute six i don't want to go to the basement again <laughs> i don't want to here we go You head down to the basement and stop at the bottom of the stairs. From what you can see, nothing seems any different than the way you left it. Would you like to go to the sitting room, the bedroom with the chest, the exercise room, or would you like to inspect the metal door? Ah. Aha. Okay. Are we doing the door thing? <laughs> my, my daughter from the living room, I hear her go, door! <laughs> right, Lollipop? First of all, if this was real life, I'd been like, you guys go on ahead, and I'm just going to go meet Jesus. So if something kills me, goodbye. Whew, I would not be able to make it. <laughs> Oh no. All right. We're going to do the door. Here we go. Got our you EVP inspect here. the metal door at the end of the hall, which turns out to be surprisingly more secure than it looks from a distance. The white trim around the door is grained and painted white to look like wood trim, but upon closer inspection, it turns out to be some kind of metal frame. Whoever put this door here really didn't want people to go through it without a key. What would you like to do? 
Okay. Sitting room, bedroom, exercise room. <laughs> Sorry, kaleidoscope, no breaks in CYOA. <laughs> Taffy says exercise. I think Chaotic had said exercise too earlier. So here we go. You head into the exercise room and take a look around. Bedroom. There are dumbbells and weights on racks along the walls and various forms of gym equipment in the room. You pull out your EMF reader and give the room a quick scan, but you don't seem to be getting any readings. What would you like to do? I think we're going to the bedroom. That's <laughs> what everybody seems to have said. So we'll just go ahead and do that. You make your way into the bedroom and inspect the chest. At first you don't see anything, but then you notice something written on the side. It reads, 1 equals 5, 2 equals 10, 3 equals 30, 4 equals question mark pounds. What do you want to do? I want to solve the riddle. <laughs> the heck? All right. I think the only thing left, oh no, bathroom is an option. So that's new. Sitting room. So we've done the door and the exercise room. Get out a calculator. Exactly. One equals five, two equals 10, three equals 30, and four equals X. <laughs> Bathroom or sitting room? Lipsha says bathroom. Oh, now go to the exercise. But didn't we already? Four equals 60? Really? Okay, why are we going back to the exercise room? Is there something I missed? Am I not following along? <laughs> Okay. Let's see what the bathroom presents for us. You head to the bathroom and begin to look around. Oh! You find generic paintings on the wall. Oh. There's a large stand up shower in here, a two person jacuzzi tub, and a vanity. You open the vanity. You're so smart, chaotic. <laughs> Vanity drawers only to find them mostly empty, only containing a few toilet paper rolls. You pull out your EMF reader and do a general sweep of the room, but you don't seem to get any significant readings. What would you like to do? Um, let's go to the exercise room. You head to the exercise room and take a look around. You see gym equipment and weights on a rack that line the wall. You know that the answer to the puzzle involves weight and pounds, but how much weight would you like to grab from the rack? Oh, oh, um, well, lollipop said for equals 60 but that's not an option grab a barbell while you were there taffy says 20 pounds crimezilla says 60 but that's not an option 80 says jason give me your thought process behind it like okay one equals five. 
2 equals 10. So wouldn't it be 40? Wait a minute. Did I do that wrong? So one weight would be 5 pounds. Two weights would be 10 pounds. Three weights. No. <laughs> Add them all together. That's 45, right? Okay, one times five, two times five, three times 10, four times 30. Times five, two times five. 120, okay. But where did the 30, one times five, two times five. Okay, one times five is five. Two times five is 10. Three times 10 is 30, and then 4 times 30. Okay, so it's 120. <laughs> Go 120. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you remove two dumbbells that weigh 60 pounds each and take them to the room with the chest. Slowly, you lower the dumbbells onto the lid when you hear a clicking noise. Never seen anything like this, but you let the thought go and open the chest. Inside is a large metal key. What would you like to do? Okay, here's the key. Metal door, bathroom, sitting room. Chaotic yelling at me. 120! Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Crimezilla says the metal door. So does Taffy. So does Jason. All right. Metal door it is. You make your way to the metal door and use the key. You open the door and to your absolute astonishment you're staring down a long concrete corridor you're completely stunned it's some kind of a secret passage you've never even heard of a home having something like this in real life what would you like to do well let's explore shall we <laughs> i'm gonna choose that one all right well, here we go Let's explore. Slowly, cautiously, you begin to make your way down the corridor. The air is noticeably colder here. Water is dripping off the walls and the ceiling. There's even calcium deposits hanging from the ceiling. This tunnel was professionally made. You can't even begin to imagine the kind of money that must have gone into something like this. Stacy's home is beautiful, but there's a no way she could afford something like this, and why would she? The journal mentioned her family had money and power, but this is something straight out of a movie. You follow the corridor until you eventually make your way to a ladder. The tunnel seems to have ended, so you make your way up the ladder until you reach some kind of a door above your head. Something's going to be up you there. You push the door open and finish climbing the ladder, only to stand in absolute shock. You take your time to let your eyes adjust before you eventually realize that you're standing in some kind of a crypt. Oh. One of the chambers of the crypt is even open and you can see feet sticking out. There's also a large black book laying in the opening of one of the crypts. What would you like to do? Oh my God, I know. <laughs> Really? The the reader? Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. 
Oh, there it goes again. Stupid thing. Crickets. Pull out your EMF reader and turn it on. You are without a doubt getting a reading in this room. You think? <laughs> you wait for a bit to see if there is anything else that happens, but it seems that whatever was here is gone now. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? It's not gone. It's waiting. All right, we're going to read the book. The front cover of the book reads, Book of Shadows. Mm -hmm. This book is some kind of a journal mixed with what you can only describe as a spell book. It details the lineage of a family called the Hemsworths that all apparently believed they were real, Chris? genuine witches. Chris Hemsworth? The book has a variety yes. of spells and incantation. There's even a spell that claims it can make you invisible that if you say a series of words Hoosier. you've never heard before. On the very next page is a passage on how to summon the spirit of someone who had died. You can't believe what you're reading. These people are complete lunatics. They're filthy rich lunatics, but lunatics nonetheless. But you decide that you want to humor the idea and you read the passage aloud, inserting the name Anna Morris as you come to the name of the spirit that the page says you can summon. You finish reading the passage and look around the crypt, but nothing happens. Just like you thought, you tell yourself, these people are nuts. The book goes into great depth about different family members, when they were born, where they lived. Basically, it's like a family tree. And... Right there on the page are the names Stacy Morris and Anna Morris. Stacy's maiden name was Hemsworth, and Morris was as a result of marriage. The book goes on to say that Stacy had formally rejected their coven and told the family to stay away from her daughter, Anna. Slowly, you close the book. This must have been the family secret that Stacy was keeping from her da daughter, Anna. Mm. Maybe. Stacy's family did something to Anna. She didn't want her daughter to be involved with this kind of stuff, so they killed her as revenge. What do you want to do? Oh, no. There's an exam in the body? Oh, good grief. <sighs> All right. The reader, the box, the body, the crypt. Of course, Chaotic says. <laughs> Examine the body. Stacy Morris and Anna Morris. We have an Anna Morris. Not here tonight with us, I don't think. But. <sighs> da, 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 da. All right, we're going to examine the body. And just FYI, if we were in a group together, I would not be examining the body. <laughs> Just gonna tell you right now. You look into the tomb holding the body. You're not sure how long the person's been dead, but you are definitely positive that this is not the body of Anna Morris. Anna Morris was only 30 years old when she went missing, and this woman is clearly much older than that. Slowly, you begin to feel around the corpse until you eventually feel a small key. You pull it out of her pocket and look at it. It has the word security written on it. This not has the to be room. to the security room. What would you like to do? We're not allowed to go in the security room. She gets naked in there. That's what it said. <laughs> Sometimes. It was a warning. She fired a warning shot. Anyway. Go back to the house. The ghost box or the reader? What was that cracking sound? <laughs> Pushing of the dead corpse? <laughs> no! Freaky! <laughs> Back to the scary house. Okay. 
Run, run, run! You make your way down the tunnel and back to the house, the security key in your hand. You know that the room with the security equipment is located on the second floor, and even though Stacy told you not to check it, you know you have to. Of course. You make it inside of the house and head towards the stairway. Well, don't make so much noise. <laughs> you don't dare move. Someone is in the house with you. Maybe it's Stacy, but what if it's not? You honestly don't want to find out. Mm -mm, no. What do you want to do? Hide. Let's hide. Let's hide. Stupid me. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I exited myself out of the game. <laughs> I'm a bright one sometimes. Okay. No option to go to the security room. Chaotic and Lolly and Lipsha hide with the book, Lipsha says. <laughs> now that's smart. All right. They said the spell book first, so we'll deal with that. You decide that you really don't have much to lose and open the spell book. You remember the passage with the words that could make you invisible. It's insane, but this house is insane. You read the words and look around. Nothing seems any different. Someone or something just walked right past you as if you didn't even exist. You watch in horror as they make their way mm. down the tunnel towards the crypts. So many words. Quietly, you make your way upstairs, careful not to make any noise. You don't hear anyone else, and slowly, you begin to pick up your pace. You make your way to the security room door and unlock it. Don't do it, man. Inside is a computer system that must be the central hub for the security system. You move the mouse and the computer flickers to life, and you can see that the last recorded date it's October 19th. That's the exact day that Anna Morris went missing. You click on the date and a video begins to play and almost instantly your heart stops in your chest. There on the video is the older woman whose body you found in the crypt and she is in a heated argument with a much younger Stacy Morris. Only the older woman isn't calling her Stacy in the video. She's calling her Anna, and she's yelling at her that if she tries to join the coven, she's going to disown her and write her out of the will. The video ends with Anna screaming at her mother to not call her by her first name, but to use her middle name, Margaret. You stare in horror at the monitor as it finally makes sense. The ghost that's been communicating with you was never Anna Morris. It was the ghost of her mother, Stacy because Anna killed her mother and has been pretending to be her this entire time. You well, hear psycho. footsteps coming up from the basement. She is in the house with you. What do you want to do? Oh yeah, let's try to talk to her. Yeah, that makes sense. Who wants to talk to the ghost, the murderous ghost, or no, the mother, the mother ghost. Raise your hand if you want to talk to ghosts. Okay, good. We have some people like me. Let's hide. Thank you. Let's, let's try to hide. You squeeze into the security room and close the doors, locking them from the inside. The room is pitch black except for the faint glow of the computer monitor. I know you're in there. 
And to be honest, you finding the key to that room is the only reason I let you come here to do your investigation. I knew my mom would lead you to it. I needed to get into that room and destroy that video. Let me in. What do you want to do? <laughs> yes, call 911. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> exactly, Lipsha. What are we going to say? <laughs> All right, spell book or call 911? All right, 911 it is. <laughs> Check your phone and see that you have three bars. You dial 911 and put the phone to your ear. Clearly your phone isn't going to work. What do you want to do? Look, that's fabulous. I guess we have to use the stupid spell book. <laughs> it's the only option. You quietly open the spell book and using the light of the monitor, you begin to read the passage that summons the spirit of someone who's died. Except this time you don't use the name Anna Morris. You use the name Stacy Morris. What are you doing? Stop reading that. You ignore her and keep reading from the book. You're not sure what happened, but you definitely heard the front door shutting. You wait inside of the locked closet, not daring to move or make a sound, before you eventually open the door and slowly go down the stairs. Before you make it to the door, you can hear the sound of Anna's car driving away. You've beaten the game. This game is actually a prequel to a previous game I posted here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this game, you might enjoy this video, which is the next video in the series. And with that being said, thank you so much for playing. Wow, we made it out. Woohoo! Only took us an hour. That's awesome. He does such a good job making these. The captain, if you're watching, bravo, sir. Love it. I'm a little over dramatic, I know, but these are good. Good. Just awesome. Yes, congratulations to us. All of you all think we're pretty cool at this. Yeah, so if you've not done the one, the mystery of the Beldum Woods, do that one. That's really, really good. And his channel is CYOA, and that stands for Choose Your Own Adventure. And he has two of these up now. Pretty cool. So this one was the prequel to the other one. Very interesting. So more to come, I'm guessing. We are the Brilliant Brigade. Exactly. Go team. Woo! I know. <laughs> Crimezilla says, I need a drink. I was like thinking of that song. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Up in here. Up in here. <laughs> I thought for sure we had screwed up or something and like would have to go back and we missed a whole bunch of stuff. But that was awesome. Yes, thank you, Captain. Well, you're welcome. I definitely wanted to play as soon as we could. These are so much fun. And I m hate that Teresa wasn't here. She really liked those interactive games. But 
you know, kind of last minute and decided I better do it now because the rest of the week I probably won't be able to. And who's your cold cases? Uh, thank you for saying, yeah, we should play. That was awesome. I didn't pick up on any secret codes. You'll have to fill us in. All the things that we missed. I know I wanted to run away too. Let's let's have a more realistic <laughs> choose your own adventure because it would be over in like five minutes. I'd walk in, walk out. <laughs> Wouldn't be much fun if I did it. It definitely would be chaotic beauty and like who's your cold cases and stuff like that leading the pack and I would be in the in the back cowering <laughs> like no guys we shouldn't go in here well anyway I know everybody has to work tomorrow so thanks for playing y'all and I will see you soon make sure that you tune in this Sunday to chaotic beauties channel Okay, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you make sure you get the notification. She'll be dropping a real life story behind the movie. Uh, we've already done Freddy Krueger and last week Hoosier Cold Cases was the voice behind um, Ed Gein. So I'm not sure who is coming up this week, but you don't want to miss it. And then we'll be live on my channel to talk about it afterwards. So. See y'all then. Good night, everyone.